Good morning, Facebook Live and Jocelyn Center fans. I'm Rebecca, the program director here at the Jocelyn Center, and this is episode 47. 47 of the Jocelyn Variety Show. So today we have Veronica here to do our warm up, and then Susan is going to do some brain games with us because keeping your brain active and healthy, especially now, is extra important. So, welcome to the Variety Show. Let's get our warm up on and then stay tuned for Susan. Thank you, Rebecca. I'm going to just march right onto this stage here and let's get moving, and we're going to get ourselves all warmed up and then learn more about our brains and put our brains to the test. I like learning new games, new exercises, good stuff. So we are just gonna be marching for a few minutes. And it really is a good all over, all over warm up. So let's increase your breathing just a little bit. And let's do this. Let's reach to the side and tap out our legs at the same time. So just a little bit. So I'm in between an easel and a chair, and yet I can still move this much. So make it just a little tap out with your legs, reaching across. There we go. And now let's reach forward and we're still gonna, actually no, we're gonna reach forward. I'm gonna move forward just a little bit and then tap your legs back. So let's see what we can do. We're gonna, uh, same leg, same arm, same leg, same arm, same leg. Reach back, reach forward. Now when you do this, you need to squeeze your abdominal muscles because you are reaching. Now this takes coordination, doesn't it? So we're reaching forward and reaching back with our feet. And you've got your abdominal squeeze because it helps to keep you stable. All right, let's challenge our, our coordination. So let's do the opposite. Opposite arm, opposite leg. I think it just naturally you fall into a pattern of using the same leg or the other leg. So now we're forcing ourselves to do it one way or the other. Reach and reach. And now let's do the same leg, same arm again. Just change it up. And you really have to focus on what you're doing. There we go. Okay. All right. So let's have a seat. And we're going to sit for a moment, catch your breath. Mine got elevated pretty quickly, so I can only use that as a guess as yours elevated a little quicker, too. So we're sitting down and sitting straight up. We're going to do some stand up and then sit down squats. Okay. So we're got our blood flowing. Now remember, when you stand up, you hardly have any weight in your toes at all. Everything's in like your arch to the back of your heel. Use your leg muscles. They're very strong. Uh, we're using all these muscles at the same time. Exhale up. And then sit all the way back down. Inhale. Exhale up. Now try to not touch your chair. Just go down a little bit and up. So I'm, I'm well above my chair seat. Because we really need to, unless you go all the way down and come out of your chair again, when you're somewhere in between, just ease into it. So don't go down very low. So inhale down and exhale up. Down and up. Now really check your form here because your knees should be fine. You're going to go down just a little bit and make sure all the weight is behind you and up. So you're reaching back and up. Make sure you don't go forward. Reach back. Okay, let's do a few more. And exhale up. Exhale up. So these kind of moves that use a lot of muscles at one time, not only are they uh, efficient, they are uh, really good reminders of how you've got so much strength here, and we can, we're using all these muscles at one time as we're exercising. And, well, you're just going to keep practicing these because the thing that I'm really concerned about is you always wanna make sure that you're, you're strong enough to at least something. So I wanna always be able to, to know that I can get up out of my chair 
and without any difficulty. I can sit down in my chair and I know I have complete control of my muscles. So we've got to use these muscles and keep them strong. Do a few more. Exhale. Exhale, and now let's sit down. And now let's stand up. Two more. All the way down. And up. So if you could do a few of these, maybe a few sets, let's just say you do a set of 10, maybe three times a day, you're gonna feel it. And once you start feeling that little soreness, that's gonna be your reward. You keep it going, keep yourself strong. Keep yourself strong and independent. Okay, I think we're warmed up enough. Let's get our brain game started. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Veronica. Yeah, a warm body so that we can warm up our minds. I'm gonna get some stuff out of the way. We've got Veronica here. She is going to do brain games with us today. Ah, oh, did I say Veronica? I meant Susan. <laughs> Thank you, Veronica. Here's Susan. You did. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Get settled. So I'm gonna get settled a little bit. And then we're going to try something new with our lighting today, so hopefully you'll be able to see Susan a little better. Let's blind her with it. There we go. You look great. Okay, good. Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, whenever you're listening and watching this. So I'm Susan Chinsky. I work at the Jocelyn Wellness Center, and I do one-on-one -on -one problem solving. I do brain boot camp, aging mastery, and a grief recovery program. So I thought we were kind of serious the last couple of weeks, so I thought let's do something fun and do some brain games, brain teasers. So we are going to do that today, and hopefully you guys will like it. And if you do, write some comments on the Facebook page. Say what you liked, maybe what you didn't like, and you can always give me suggestions what you want me to talk about. So um, we are ready. So the first one is, it's a little riddle. So what can travel the world while staying in a corner? What can travel the world while staying in a corner? Any idea? Did you say, hold on, they're trying to get the lights ready. Did you say a stamp? Change it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, the next riddle is, what has many keys but can't open a single lock? So what has many keys but can't open a single lock? Any idea what that could be? How about a piano? Did you get that? How are these going? Okay, the next one is, during which month do people sleep the least? So you're thinking, okay, what month would that be? Would it be summer maybe because it's warmer? Would it be winter? How about it is February because there's less nights in the month of February. Ha <laughs> clever. Did you guys get that? <laughs> I think these are hard. I, <laughs> I have a hard time getting these. Okay, how about what has hands but cannot clap? Now that you know, how about a clock? Did you guys get that? A clock? <laughs> okay, and the last one is, what invention lets you look right through a wall? What invention lets you look right through a wall? Okay, how about a window? <laughs> I, I thought it was a peephole. And I'm not sure if people's accepted. I was trying to think, why would it be wall and not people or either or both? So anyway, so that was our little riddles. Hope you like that. Now we're going to do some word scrambles. And the first one is K-O-B-O. -O. Can you figure out what that is? Are you scrambling? Are you putting maybe the two vowels together? Does that help you? And we have book. Did you guys get that? Okay, the next one. And it's, this one's a theme. So this is a word scramble theme. So they get a little harder. So the next letters are A, E, D, R. 
And once again, are you putting the two vowels together? Maybe they're not A and E, maybe they're E and A. So then you have the consonants at the end. So it's either R is the first letter, D is the first letter. Did you get read? So we have a book, read, so it's the following the same theme. Okay, and the next one is R-E-I-T-W. So sometimes when you have a, a vowel, two vowels, it may be the E's at the end of the word. So if you look at putting the E at the end of the word, and maybe because there's three consonants, putting two of the consonants together, and we talked about it's the same theme. So can you think of what that could be? Did any of you get the word right? <laughs> <laughs> and the last one is T A H O U R. You may be able to think about the theme, and it's, I know it's a little longer word, but you may be able to, it may just pop out the first letter. If it doesn't, how about putting the T and the H together? Now, this one has two vowels at the first. So what do we know? Book, write, um, read. Did anyone get the author? How'd you guys do on that? Okay, now the next one is a little number game. So the numbers are 5 plus 3 plus 2. So when we do that, 5 plus 3 plus 2, we go in order, right? So 5 and 3 is 8, and then plus 2 is 10. So how about the next one? If we go in order, we might say 5 plus 3 is 8 times 2 is 16. But do you stay in the order when you do multiplication? And the answer is no. You have to multiply first. So 3 times 2. So. We got the first one, right? The second one, we put them in parentheses, and then it was 5 plus 6 is 11. So remember, if you have numbers, you're doing the multiplication first, then the addition. And that'll help you in the games that we're going to play next. So begin the games. So are you smart enough to solve this one? This one's a little difficult, but what do we know in this? We know that there's three cherries and they equal 60. So that's the only thing we really know here. So what would the cherries be? If we divide three into 60, they'd be, the cherries would each be 20. Okay, so we know the cherries are 20, right? So now we know the cherries, so 20 plus two digits would be 36. So you take 36 minus the cherries, which would be 16, divided into two, because you have two pineapples, so that would be eight. So if you had cherries are 20, eight, and eight, you have 36. Are you guys following? So we know the cherries are 20, the pineapples are eight. So let's go back to the first one, because that we know that the pineapple is eight. So what would the watermelon be? So eight minus something equals four. So the watermelon's four. You got it? Are you following me, hopefully? Okay, so now we know the watermelon's four at the bottom. The cherries are 20. The pineapple is, what did we say the pineapple was? Eight, thank you. <laughs> so remember, we learned that you do the multiplication first. So the cherries are 20 times the pineapple is 8. So what's 20 times 8? 160. And then we know the watermelon's 4. So it's 164. So did you get all that? Let's go ahead. So we got the cherries were 20, pineapple 8, watermelon 4. Oh, we didn't have to end in that. OK, that's cool. OK, so that was that equation. <laughs> Now, this is the same thing. OK, what do we know from this? We know that the sneakers are 30. So if they're 30 divided by three sneakers, each one is 10. So the sneakers are 10, right? So 10 plus 10 plus 10 is 30. OK, so what else do we know here? 
we know sneakers are 10. So if we say 20 minus 10, we have 10. So what would the boys be? They'd each be five, right? So five plus five is 10, plus 10 is 20. So we got that. Okay, so we know the boys five. So 13 minus five is eight. So the two cones are four and four. No, wait, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, four and four. So the cones are four plus four plus eight is 13. Okay, now how about the bottom one? Now I'm gonna give you a chance to just look at the bottom one and what you would say. We, cut, we know the cone. Well, we know two cones are four, but we have one cone. Did you catch that? That's only one cone. So if two cones are four, then one cone is two. Also the same with the tennis shoe. So if the tennis shoe is 10, what's half of the tennis shoe? Half of both tennis shoes are five. So we have five down there. So we have five and two. But look at the boy. Does he look like these boys? Go ahead and look at that. So what would we add to the boys? The boy down there. I think the boy has two ice cream cones. So we gotta add that to the boy. So first of all, we know that the boy is five. So him alone is five. Then he's got two ice cream cones, which we decided were four. And did you notice on his feet? He looks a little different than these guys. So we have to add another 10. So the boy alone is five for the boy, 10 for the, oops, let's see, 10 for the sneakers, sneakers thank you, <laughs> and four for the ice cream cones. So the boy alone is 19. Did you all get that? This was a hard one. I didn't get this at the beginning. It took me a while to realize he's fully different than these boys and that there's only one sneaker and one cone. So then we have the boy is 19 and the ice cream is two and then we have plus five. So this answer is 43. So see we got the 10, the five, and the two cones or 43. Did you guys get that? I know, this is getting harder. Someone posted this on a um, Facebook page on um, a website that, for my neighborhood, and I thought, these are really good. And people, there were like 100, 150 people like trying to do these, and people came up with all sorts of different answers. So I thought these were really good to do today. I thought they were kind of fun. And we can probably find more of these. But did you all get that? Okay, now the next one. So it's the same principle. So we know that the crowns, because you always go to what there is a lot of, and then you can divide it. So 24 divided by three, because we have three crowns, is eight. So we know these crowns are eight. So now we go 22 minus eight. And that is, I always hated twos and eights, that's 14. So the two rings have to equal 14. So if we divide 14 into two, we have seven. So this equation is seven plus seven plus eight equals 22. Okay, so we know that. Now we said the rings were seven each. So 19 minus seven is 12. So we know that the diamonds each, we have to divide it in, we know that these two equal 12, so divide it in half, and that would be six. But did you catch something? Is it only one blue, and I don't know why I said diamond, but it's a blue stone. Blue stone, did you catch that there's two of them? So if two are six, divide it again by two, so each of the stones is three. 
So we have 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 3 plus 3 is another 6, that's 12, plus 7 gives us the 19. Are you all following that? Okay, so now back to the crown here. So we said the crown is 8. So we'll say 16 minus the crown is 8. So now we have red stones. So those two red stones, or the four actually red stones, have to equal 8. So if we want, we can actually say divide 8 by 4. So we would get each red stone would be 2. So does that make sense? So we have 2 plus 2 is 4, and then another 4 is 8, plus the crown is 8, so we have 16. Did you all get that? Now these are kind of interesting, kind of hard, but they're fun. Okay, so what is this answer? So we have a crown. Now, did you all catch the crown, what color stone that is? It's a blue stone. So we said the crown here was eight with the blue stone, but the blue stone compared to the red stone, we said the blue stone was three and the red stone was two. So if we have a crown and said it was eight and it had the red stone, now we have to say plus one. So we have eight, are you guys getting that? Eight. And then we had three, we had two, we had two is the blue, is the red, but we had three, so we have to say eight minus two plus three. So, okay, wait, this is a little more difficult. Okay, let me figure this out a better way. So this is eight, the crown is eight with a red stone. We don't have a red stone, we have a blue stone. So blue stone is one more than the red, and this is red, so eight. So it should actually be, I would do it differently than the paper said. I would say it would be minus one because the red is, is less, the blue, oh no, I'd say plus one because the blue is more than the red. Does that make sense? <laughs> so it actually should be nine. Eight, six, seven, yeah, it should be nine. Okay, now we have a blue and a red. Now this will be easier because we decided the blue is three and the red is two, so that would be five. That was easier. Okay, now, but we have a ring and we decided the ring was seven with the blue stone. So it has a red stone. So it would be seven minus one, which would be, I don't know how they did this. They say seven minus three plus two. I think that's more confusing. But do you think that's easier? Seven is the ring, it's the ring in blue, minus three. So they took off the blue stone is what they did and then they added the red stone. So, so that would be eight. D does that make sense to everyone? I hope so. So there we go. And the final number was 39. So see, they minused it. They took, the, they took the blue stone off and put the red stone. So they minus the blue stone, then they added the red stone. That's how they did, and they got 39. Either way, it works however you do it. Sometimes I do math differently than, than these, pro these problems. But anyway, hopefully you guys got it, and hopefully you liked that. And again, I'm Susan Chinsky, working at the Wellness, Jocelyn Wellness Center. And right now I'm teaching a brain boot camp online. Um, so you have to have a computer or an iPad or something so you can see everyone in the class. But we are going to start another one probably in about a couple weeks. So if you're interested, you can call me. You can call Veronica. Veronica is at extension 117. And we'd love for you to be in the class. We don't do these games. We do other games and other fun and teach you a lot more stuff. And it's a two-hour class. It's usually a three hour class twice a week. Right now we're doing it two hours, two and a half hours, because it's a little three hours is kind of hard on the computer. So hopefully you'd like to take the class with us and we'd love to have you and have fun. And remember, play games, 
keep using your mind, use your memory, use everything. Because just like a muscle in your muscles, you're exercising, this is exercising your brain muscles. So thank you and have a good day, everyone. Here's Rebecca, hold on. <laughs> Thank you so much, Susan. Oh, there we go. Okay, guys, so it is Wednesday, which means tomorrow is Thursday. Tomorrow you get to do a whole workout day with Veronica. So make sure you've got sneakers or some safe shoes on and your chair ready because she is going to lead us in a in a full workout, not just a warm-up. Quite a treat. I hope you guys enjoy that tomorrow. Um, have a wonderful day. Stay hydrated. It is hot out there today. Um, if you are struggling with your air conditioning, give us a call. Let us know. We have resources that can help uh, financially and cool centers will be activated here in the next week or so so stay tuned for more information on that uh, but stay safe stay hydrated and we'll see y'all tomorrow have a great day